There you go. And then the upward arrow indicates the resurrection. Then after he rose, the book of Acts tells, he was seen of men for 40 days. During that 40 days, he appeared a number of times. Some, I think, 13 times. Sometimes to individuals. Sometimes the two walk in the road to Emmaus. One time to 500 at one time. But in the Gospels, the Spirit was not given. It was necessary for Jesus to go away and be glorified. And that will take you just a minute to probably write down. Spirit not given. It's necessary for Jesus to go away and be glorified. Are we ready to move on? No? Okay. Just take a little time, but once you get this, it's, it's very important, I think, to understand the book of Acts. So then I draw an upward arrow, and that upward arrow, the first little arrow between the 3 and the 40, that's a resurrection. What do you suppose the next upward arrow? That's the ascension where Jesus rose. And that's recorded both in Luke and in the first chapter of Acts. He ascended into heaven. Then we usher in the book of Acts, starting with the ascension. First, first we have to give commandments that he ascended in about the 8th or ninth verse of the first chapter. They waited after the ascension in the upper room some seven days. Some people say ten days. I'm not going to argue about it, but seven days. Somewhere there's 50 days because Pentecost means 50. Okay. And the downward arrow indicates what? The outpouring of the Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit. It is in the book of Acts where people are born again, where people are born of the water and the Spirit, where the churches are founded. These things did not occur in the Gospels. It was necessary for Jesus to go away. The next upward line divides the Acts from the Epistles. And in the Epistles, as I said earlier, this gives instructions Two Christians on how to live a Christian life, how to worship, and so forth. So that gives a little pictorial view of the book of of the actually of the Bible overview of the Bible. Acts of the Apostles. Now, this would be on page four of your notes. The Acts of the Apostles is what our Bible calls it. In reality, it is the Acts of the risen Christ through the Holy Ghost working in the church. Now, the church, as we will see, Jesus intended for the church to be mission-minded. Jesus, it's recorded in Matthew, go and teach all nations. In Mark, preach the gospel to every creature. Go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. In Luke, that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in all nations. Jesus intended the church to be missions-minded. In Acts, we will talk about this. You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the uttermost parts of the earth. But the church at first wasn't very mission-minded. The first uh, about five chapters that seems to be contained in Jerusalem. So what it took for the gospel to be fulfilled was persecution. And it was when the persecution occurred that then the apostles and disciples began to scatter and to carry the gospel to other areas. 
It is interesting that Saul of Tarsus was instrumental in spreading the gospel both before and after his conversion. Before his conversion, he was putting people in prison and they fled to various areas. After the conversion, he was carrying the gospel himself. Now, the theme of the book of Acts, the theme is the spread of the gospel. Okay, the go, it's the green light. It's the go of the gospel, the spread of the gospel. Okay, the key word, if I, if I chose one word that I would feel would be a key word in the book of Acts, it's the word witness. Now, let's give some reasons why it's so important to study the book of Acts. First of all, it's the book of salvation. I wrote the first tract I ever wrote in my life, and I haven't written many, but it was titled, The Most Important Question Ever Asked. It's not, will I get married? Who I should get married to? It's not, will I make a whole lot of money? It's not, where I will live? What do you think is the most important question ever asked? What must I do to what? Be saved. So it's the book of salvation. You'll not ask a more important question. And it is in the book of Acts where we find salvation. Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born of the water and the spirit. Now, we find examples of the water and spirit baptism in the book of Acts. Chapter 2, on the day of Pentecost, they were all filled with the spirit. In Acts 2.38, he commanded them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus. Spirit, verses 1 through 4, water baptism, verses approximately 38, at Jerusalem. At Samaria, Philip preached the gospel to Samaria. Only they were baptized in water. But because Peter had the keys of the kingdom, it was Peter and John who went there, and when they got there, they laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. Water, Spirit. Acts chapter 10, Cornelius, Gentile. Peter reluctant to go there. We'll go more detail to that. The Bible says, while Peter yet spake, the Holy Ghost fell. They heard them speak with tongues. That's Spirit birth of spirit. Then, verse 48, Peter commanded them to be what? Baptized in the name of the Lord. Water. Water and spirit. Acts 19, Paul goes to Ephesus. He asks them, have you received the Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit since you believe? That's spirit. They said, we've not heard whether there be any Holy Spirit. He asked them then, how were you baptized? That was water. He baptized them in water in the name of Jesus and laid hands on them and they received the Spirit, water and Spirit. So it is in the book of Acts where we find it. You don't find salvation any other place. When people try to tell you, tell you, well, here's an Ephesians that says, by grace are you saved, not through works, but through faith. Yeah, that's true. But he's writing to people who already had the Holy Ghost. How'd they get the Holy Ghost? Here in Acts chapter 19. Ephesus, book of Ephesians written to them. Okay. Another thing about the book of Acts, it's the history of the early church. Have you ever heard the expression, history repeats itself? Especially in a negative sense. The reason history repeats itself, especially in a negative sense, is we don't learn well from history. That's the truth. Some of the same mistakes they're making in Bible days we're making today. because We don't know history very well. Okay? So it's the history of the first church. It helps to understand the Pauline epistles. Because most every, most every epistle, practically, except the general epistles, was, well, I say about four, how many? Paul wrote, 
trying to think right now. About 14. It depends on what you consider Hebrews it. But, for example, the book of Galatians. Paul went to Galatians, the 16th chapter of Acts. He wrote to the church of Philippi, which he found it also at the 16th chapter of Acts. He wrote to the church at first of Thessalonica, Thessalonica the epistles first and second Thessalonians, that Paul went to in the 17th chapter of Acts. In the 18th chapter of Acts, Paul went to Corinth. It was to the Corinthians that Paul wrote first and second Corinthians. He went to Ephesus. In the, uh, Apollos did in 19, Acts 18 19, and Paul went in the first part of chapter 19. To that is written the Ephesians. There are things in the, when you read the epistles that are better understood if you read how the church started. You know, if you.